Hello, everyone, and welcome to Scourge of War Waterloo, episode 14. Uh, today, finally, as I've been promising for weeks, we are going to do the Picton's Rascals scenario from Contra Bra. It is basically the same scenario we played in episode 11, the Namir Road, only this time we'll be playing from the Allied side instead of the French. Uh, before we get into that, though, um, I've, uh, I've decided to make a, a, a few changes <clears throat> to uh, the way I've been doing this. Um, I like the way the divisional scenarios have been going, where I play the scenario and then I just overdub the... Um, overdub the commentary on top of it. Uh, when I first started doing this series, I wasn't quite sure what I, what I wanted to accomplish. At first, I just wanted to make videos showing how I beat the scenarios. So when I did the, uh, the, the Brigade series, the, you know, the first group of videos I did, um, I didn't do any uh, commentary over the original videos. I just played the scenario and uploaded it to YouTube. And... At the end of those, there were eight brigade scenarios. At the end of those scenarios, uh, or at the end of that series, uh, when watching it back, I, you know, I was kind of watching it saying, you know, this is cool. It shows you, you know, the most efficient ways to beat the scenarios. But unless you already know how to play the game, uh, you, you weren't really going to get anything from it. If you knew how to play the game, then it was just a matter of seeing what I did and just copying it and, you know, easy peasy. If you were new to the game, however, with no explanation at all uh, as to what I was doing, why I was doing it, or how I was doing it, just seeing me play the scenarios wasn't going to be very helpful because, uh, you know, a new player isn't going to understand the mechanics of the game, uh, you know, so they're not going to understand why I'm doing certain things. Uh, so to rectify that, I did an extra episode in the Brigade series, which was episode nine, where I basically, uh, in a, what ended up being a three-hour video, uh, I covered uh, basically snapshots of all eight of the Brigade scenarios where I explained you know, the most important things you needed to know uh, to beat each scenario. I, instead of doing commentary over each each individual scenario, I, I instead just kind of um, fast forwarded through, you know, each scenario just to the important points of the scenario, um, you know, and kind of covered what you absolutely needed to know to to beat the scenarios. Um, I've decided that I'm actually going to redo that the brigade scenarios and redo them the way I've been doing the division scenarios. Uh, I still have all the raw footage, uh, so I don't need to re-record all the scenarios that are already played. All I need to do is go back to each individual video and overdub commentary onto each one. Uh, so I'm hoping to have that done just all in one weekend. It, they're all short scenarios. Um, it, it, you know, it shouldn't be that big a process to do. And then just delete the um, episode 9, which was the... Uh, the brigade wrap-up video, which will be kind of redundant after I do commentary on each individual scenario. I think I'll be able to be a little more in-depth uh, for each scenario if I if I go ahead and redo that. Um, and then just I'll re-upload it. I'll call it, you know, episode one redux or episode two redux and so forth, uh, just to let, you know, people know that I've actually redone it. <clears throat> and I, I think I, I, with... You know, I'll be able to cover everything more specifically better than I did in the Brigade wrap-up video, which was kind of an afterthought. You know, the only reason I did that is, is after uploading the videos, that's kind of when I realized that somebody new to the game is not really going to understand what I did and why I did it and how I did it without some sort of explanation. And it was, you know, the, the series has kind of evolved. I originally, like I said, I just wanted to show how I beat them. I wasn't, you know, beat the scenarios. I wasn't really, like, specifically trying to target any, you know, specific audience. But as the series has evolved, um, you know, I've kind of decided that I wanted to gear it towards newer players, um, you know. And I've kind of started doing that with the divisional scenarios where I'm, just, I'm better able to explain what I'm doing because I 
commentate directly over each scenario as opposed to just you know skipping ahead and just going to kind of the finer points um so yeah that's a little project i'm going to do i'm going to redo uh all the brigade scenarios uh just the commentary. The videos the, are fine. The you know the scenario playthroughs. There's nothing wrong with them. It's just that you know the first eight videos. There's just there's no commentary. You're just watching me play, and then I kind of like band-aided it uh, with episode nine, uh, and just kind of got the important points of of the eight scenarios. But I've never really been happy with the way that worked out. Um, looking back at how I've did it versus how I've been doing the divisional scenarios. And I think I'm just, as I'm doing this, I think I'm just getting, I'm getting better at doing commentary to begin with. I mean, you guys can be the judge of that, but I feel like I'm getting better at it anyway. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a little project I want to do to, uh, you know, kind of bring the whole series in line uh, with the way uh, I've been doing the divisional scenarios. Um, the only hitch there is uh there are eight brigade scenarios, but as of right now, there are uh, there are nine videos in the brigade series because I made a wrap up video at the end with the commentary. Uh, so I kind of got to have figure out a way because at the beginning of every episode, I always say what episode it is. So if I redo it and now there's only eight, there's not going to be an episode nine. It's just going to jump from episode eight, which would be the Wavra Hulot attack scenario, into episode ten which was the first um, divisional scenario, the, the Imperial Guard assault at Ligny. So there won't be any episode nine. It'll just jump from eight to 10, which is stupid. So um, maybe I'll do like an, uh, I don't know, just a quick introductory statement or something as, a, as episode one, just to, you know, say what the series is going to be about or whatever or just something really quick just to make that episode one and i'll start with you know episode two being the first brigade scenario so that everything is advanced and then when you get to the division scenarios everything still lines up as far as the number of the episode but yeah i'll figure that out as i'm going to do it uh but yeah that's just i wanted to let you guys know that i'm going to be pulling down all the basically the entire brigade series as it is right now is going to be pulled down i'm going to redo the audio on uh the all eight brigade scenarios um over hopefully this weekend uh <clears throat> and then re up re-upload them and you know then it should be a lot better than it is now because uh I just feel like the divisional scenarios are turning out better the way I'm doing them now. Um, and, you know, I've just never been happy with the way the brigade scenarios came out. I just didn't quite have a, a plan for this when I started it. And the plan, you know, the of what the series is going to be about kind of took shape over the course of kind of the end of the brigade series and the beginning of the division series is kind of where I, I felt I started to find my footing of how I wanted to do these things. Um, so yeah, I don't want to make this too long because I'm cutting into your Pickens Rascals time. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be redoing all the brigade scenarios. So, all right, let's start the video here and get to the good stuff. So <clears throat> as promised, we will be playing Picton scenario from Katra Bra. Like I said, this is basically the same scenario um, as episode 11, the Namir Road, we're just going to be playing from the Allied side. Now, the biggest thing I notice from people when I play, uh, when I see them play the scenario on YouTube, is the tendency to panic right off the gate because you start off in not a great situation. As you can see, Pack and Kemp's uh, brigades are far out in front of the lines, they're overextended, and there's a lot of French coming on. And there's a tendency to just panic and try and start saving the situation right away. Um, as you see, we need 4,500 points for a major victory. That isn't as high as you think it is because there's two uh, objectives, um, objectives at any one time. One of them changes, but they cough up a lot of points. It isn't that hard to reach uh, 4,500 points here. Uh, the most important thing with this scenario is not to panic at the beginning you're going to be in a messed up situation and running around like a chicken without a head is not going to help you deal with it any better. So what you really want to do in this situation is 
uh, basically kind of stay where you are. You know, your forward units are going to get shot up. The French have cavalry, and you can't just stand there and do what I always do with skirmishers and, and, and line and getting the best of it. We are not going to get the best of it at first here. It's just not going to happen. Um, okay, so it says, the enemy is coming on strong once again. Your division will hold and protect the Namir road from being taken. Your division is overextended, however. Your forward position should be held to hold up the enemy for as long as possible. Hold your position until further orders. All right, so basically, here come the French. And as you can see, our forward lines are way out in front. But the objective is there, the initial objective. And you can see, we are totally outgunned. The French have... Okay, it says, Major General Kempf reports that Colonel Barnard's 95th rifle is detached in the woods on the far left flank. Report a strong presence threatening his position. They will hold as long as they can, but expect them to withdraw without reinforcements. Uh, those 95th rifles, if you remember when we played um, the Namir Road scenario, um, at the very beginning, those that one allied unit that was in the woods that uh, we basically just charged into and drove off, that's that. They're in the far left, and they're reporting basically that Campy's brigade is coming forward. Um, <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to do here is form square. That is the tried and true method of defending against cavalry. Now, the second thing I'm going to do here is pull these pull these Jaegers. I'm going to pull them back because they're, they're not going to do any good up there. They're just a wasted unit. They're going to get shot up. Uh, they're totally outnumbered. So I'm going to pull them back towards this artillery battery uh, where they can do some good. Okay, and over on the left here, it's just infantry. There's not a lot of cavalry. So I'm going to bring this line here up and basically fill in the gap between this leftmost unit on the Namir Road and that artillery battery. Uh, I got to keep an eye on the things on the right because, you know, that's where it's going to get the most hairy. But I want to set up the left. Because the left, once I get it set up, it's going to need a lot less of my attention than the right will. Because this is your standard kind of infantry affair. And I can use skirmishers over here. Uh, you know, I don't use them quite to the degree I used them in the last scenario, um, Le Grand Pont, because... Uh, the enemy's just much closer. I don't have the time to actually go and set up, you know, the super deathy skirmisher line. Uh, there's too much stuff I have to watch going on on the right. So I'm just going to set up kind of a quick skirmisher line, you know, just to, just to slow these, these, uh, these advancing French down here. Nothing crazy, you know. Like I said, the important thing here is not to panic. Yes, we're outnumbered. We're outgunned. Um, and we're going to take more losses than we inflict in this situation. I know every video I've ever said, don't do that. Don't ever get yourself in a situation where you're going to take more losses than you inflict. Uh, that's just the way the scenario is written. Uh, there's really no choice in the matter. You have to hold this forward position um, in order to gain points from the objective. And the very worst thing you can do, you do have a lot of reserves back here on the Nami Road. The worst thing you can do is send them forward. Because this is not a position you're going to need to hold for that long. I think it's like 20 minutes. So you can see we have... These are not units under our control. We see we have plenty of reserves back here. And I'm not going to commit them. There is no reason to panic here. So I'm basically just making sure that, uh, you know, I get my... Uh, I'm bringing these these 95th rifles back. I'm going to deploy them all into skirmishers. And, you know, this artillery battery right here is going to pour canister into, uh, you know, I think this is um, Hulot, uh, Hassan's brigade. And they're charging my skirmishers here. Like I said, this is something I've, you know, a thousand times we've done this. You know, let them, let them charge the skirmishers and waste a charge, and they'll get fired on by this line unit behind them. Not a big deal. You know, uh, same thing's going to happen here. All right. Let's, uh... I actually pulled a little gamey trick right there. I, they went to charge the skirmishers, and I recalled them. Um, and basically recombined them into the, uh... 
recombine them into their original unit. That's cheating. <laughs> it, you know, I'm using a game mechanic there that lets me recall, you know, skirmishers. Once when you recall skirmishers, they're no longer valid targets. They're part of the unit again. Um, I would call that cheating. I don't think that was the way it was meant to be intended to be used. But uh, you know, the game lets me do it, and I needed to do something quick, so I used that. Again, these are just, you know, these are, these are things that I've learned that you can do with the game's mechanics, uh, you know, and it, it may not always be fair, but, you know, if I can do it, I'm going to do it. <laughs> but if you're concerned with playing with honor, which I'm not, but if you are, don't recall skirmishers to get them out of a charge, because I would call that cheating. Alright, so these skirmishers are falling back, and I don't have any more further use for them. So as soon as they're done retreating, I'm just going to recall them. Now again, we're, we're, we're not in a great spot here, we're overextended, but this is one of those scenarios where casualties, you know, they're not as, as, as critical. I know I always say, always try and get the best of it. Um, and try and keep your men out of situations where they're going to take more casualties than they inflict. And for the most part, that that's a good rule of thumb. This scenario is a little different. It's very, very fast out of the gate. You're attacked almost from the start. And you don't have a lot of time to react. Um, and set things up to be uh, the way you want them to be. You have a little more time on the left than you do on the right. Um, but you still don't get to set things up kind of exactly the way like to. So the important thing is, like I said, not to panic. These units that I have in square up here, they're going to get the worst of it. They're going to get shot to pieces by this line infantry. And they can't form line because the cavalry is right there. So they're only presenting, you know, 25% of their firepower to the enemy, while the enemy gets to shoot at them with 100% of their firepower because they're in line. There's really nothing we can do about that. The important thing is to hold the objective. And that's what we're doing. So, you know, we're going to take, uh, you know, more losses over here, especially with these two units in square, um, you know, than we would like. But because we're holding the objective, it's largely going to not... It's not going to be killer for us. Uh, now, 20 minutes after, I think, this objective disappears and one forms kind of further back on the Nama Road that just went down behind me here. Um, and I'm setting up a defense to that right now, because I, you know, I played the scenario before, I know it's going to happen. And I'm bringing my artillery forward to kind of be the central defense of that position. And you'll see later on when I withdraw this advanced line, that's going to pay huge dividends, because we're going to start blasting holes in people. So now that I've got these 95th rifles out of the way, I'm going to have them do what they do best and deploy them into skirmisher formation and uh, put them in front of the artillery so that the infantry can't shoot at the inf at the artillery. They can only shoot at the skirmishers. If you recall in the King of Westphalia, I did something very similar where I brought up artillery kind of right to the front and I put skirmishers in front of them to screen them from being fired upon by infantry. Um, here, we didn't have to move the artillery. The enemy came to us. But I'm essentially going to do the same thing. I'm going to put uh, skirmishers in front of the artillery to, you know, stop the infantry from firing on the artillery. The French infantry, that is. And instead, we're going to do that. We're going to bomb them with canister, and they're not going to stay there. And once I get this set up, I, you'll see later in the scenario, I don't really pay too much attention to what's going on over here. Because... This is one of my go-to formations uh, of defense, and um, very, very hard for the AI to overcome this. Uh, it, it, it works all the time. <coughs> so, um, as soon as I get this set up, I'm going to start to focus more on the right. As it turns out, right now, while I'm setting this up, that far most square on the, uh, the right is being routed. There they are, running for their lives. Like they, they, they basically broke... Um, 
they broke because they were uh, infantry fire, basically. They had a lot of infantry firing on them. And then once they broke, the cavalry came in and rode, rode them down. I knew that would happen, so I had moved a square up in front right here that you can see to basically cover their retreat. That rightmost square always falls. They're not going to stand. It's just, it's just too much in front of them. It's a whole French brigade shooting at them, and they're just stuck there in square, and they can't do anything about it. Um, false alarm right there. I thought they were trying to charge uh, at this unit, and I wanted to get the leader out of the way. Um, in the process, I actually moved the leader too far away from the objective and uncovered the objective. Um, so I wasn't getting any points from it. But as soon as I see the, uh, the icon, you know, uh, you know, lose the, uh, the allied colors, and I know the objective is no longer being held, I, I moved the leader back in, I kind of realized what I did. Not a big deal, you can drop an objective for a couple of seconds, it's not going to make any difference. You know, as long as you recognize it and, you know, recover it. Um, so, like I said, there are two objectives in this scenario. This is one right here, and then the other one is this one that you see that I just lost. Kind of right up here, this one. Yeah, that, right there. I realized I just lost it because it no longer has the allied colors. So, I lost it because I moved my leader too far away. So, we're going to move him back now so that I can, once again, uh, get the objective. And I'm just going to double-click the leader so he gets back there. It's kind of a quick as possible. In the meantime, these, the square that has fallen back is, um, you know, re reforming, but they're tired now. You can see their fatigue is taking a hit. Uh, they've shot up pretty bad. They uh, lost 139 men, and they've only inflicted 62 casualties. I said that was going to happen. You know, the main point is that they stalled the advance and let us keep sucking points out of this objective. So now what we got to be careful of here is there's a gap in my lines that the French cavalry can start coming through. We're going to get a bit of a reprieve, though, because some Dutch uh, cavalry that was previously grazing over by Patra Bra, um, here they come. And uh, they're not under my control. They're, they're under the AI's control. But one of the reasons I kind of let this situation on the right kind of develop the way it is is... I want the French cavalry to get close enough that these, this Dutch cavalry kind of activates. I don't have any control over them, so the only way they get activated is by an enemy coming in range of them. Uh, so I kind of have to kind of let that French attack come forward so that these Dutch cavalry can get involved. Um, and they go, they go a long way in basically driving the, the, the French cavalry away. Uh, you know, or at, at the very least nullifying uh, so they don't present quite the threat that they, uh, you know, present at the beginning of the scenario where you're just stuck in square and there's nothing you can do with that. Um, you know, the main, the main reason you want to form those two rightmost units in square and just kind of leave them there is because two reasons. One, they're going to stand there for a little while and you're going to at least get, you know, points from the objective. And we're still getting points from the objective. Uh, even though that rightmost square has now collapsed. Um, and the other thing is, is they're covering the rest of the line. Um, the cavalry is basically has all their attention kind of focused in this corner area up here. But the whole rest of our line is more or less free to stay in line. I can deploy some skirmishers. You know, they're kind of covered by these squares. Uh, you know, so we make, we make mince, you know, mincemeat out of... Uh, the French over on the left here. I mean, we just we just killed them. Um, you know, the the real tense situation there is at the very beginning with um, the whole French situation over here in the corner here. Uh, and like I said, the most important thing is don't panic. Form square. You're not going to get the better of it right off the bat. Sit tight. Just hold the objective for as long as you can. You should be able to hold it for you know, the entire time, um, you know, before it disappears and the new one forms back on the, uh, the Nemir Road. And as you can see, I've got artillery set up, and uh, I'm, initially I'm thinking about bringing this unit up and forming 
square, right kind of in the middle, kind of right there, just to just to have a buffer between the where the French cavalry are and kind of where my artillery are. But very soon we are going to, uh, that objective is going to disappear and we're going to start pulling our line back because it is very overextended. I don't know how these guys got turned around, but they're facing the wrong way. <laughs> there you go, fellas. Straighten out. And you, you can see we're, we've got our entire skirmisher line on the left here. The French were never even a threat over there. The whole left side of this uh, battle isn't that big a deal. It's the right side, you know, that you have to kind of worry about. All right, so what's happening here is we've lost the objective again. Now, the reason we've lost this objective is this square. These fellas right here, they're the ones holding it. And they are lost so many men at this point that um, they no longer have enough men to hold the objective. So I'm going to move this unit up here to basically resupply the number of men within range of the objective so that we can begin getting points from it again. However, I think it disappears relatively soon uh, and the new one reappears on the Namir Road. There it goes. So it's gone anyway at this point. Uh, and enemy reinforcements have been seen taking up positions near Jemion Court far to the south. Your forward right position should be retired back to the Namir Road. All right, so this is the new objective. Uh, so what we're going to do is start bringing our kind of overextended line, kind of this portion of the line here, and we're going to start to move them back and basically form a defense around this artillery battery and uh, occupying these objectives. And this is the first one right here. This is the, the new one. So I'm gonna move. Uh, I'm gonna move Picton, who is the division commander, and I'm just gonna move quickly. Move him by uh, this objective, so that you know I have the uh, you know I have the leader in position already. And uh, as the troops come back, you know, once we get enough men in range of the objective, we will uh, take possession of it and start gaining points from it. So this wasn't that bad. We lost a lot of men. We certainly got the worst of it in the right, uh, you know, the, on our right flank, but there's really no way around that in the scenario. Um, and it's uh, it's just kind of designed that way, you know. Um, the objectives, especially uh, this one and the one on the uh, further uh, west here on the Namir Road, they cough up a lot of points. So the number of casualties you take it isn't as meaningful in this scenario as it is in, say, you know, other scenarios where you, you know, it can have a more detrimental effect. The scenario is almost designed so that, you know, it, it, the scenario knows that you're going to take a lot of casualties on the right side of your line at first. You don't have cavalry, and they do at the beginning. It's that simple. And that, that you know, bottles you up into square formation. So now we've uh, we've got enough troops in range, range of the objective. So now we've begun occupying that uh, objective, and we'll begin getting points from that. Uh, I don't actually know um, how many points per minute each objective is worth. I probably should have brought up the mini map uh, in the uh, when I was actually playing the scenario to uh, put that on the video. Uh, but I'm sure it's probably something like a hundred points per minute. Um, because your point your point totals rise pretty quickly. You need 4,500 points to win this scenario, and uh, I think we're pretty close to it already. You know, just because of, uh, of how much we've held the objectives. All right, so we're beginning to push to pull our line back to the Namir Road, and like I said, we're going to set up a, a defense kind of around this artillery battery. Now, at some point, I uh, I think I start messing around with stuff on the left and not paying attention to what's on the right here. And yeah, there's a little cavalry. I was I was watching, but I wasn't. Uh, I guess I wasn't uh, paying attention. And uh, this little French cavalry unit here actually captured one of my guns. But uh, 
We're gonna blow them to holy hell in a second here. And they're gonna turn and run. So what I'm gonna do actually is take command of the artillery battery commander right here and actually target that unit specifically. And it took one canister shot to run them off. That's all it took. <laughs> Alright, so as I am slowly pulling the right side of the line back, I'm uncovering the uh, kind of the left side of my line a little bit, so I have to pull them back. And I'm going to pull the main line back and just kind of leave some skirmishers up there to cover the withdrawal. So these guys here, I'm going to pull back put them in this room, put them on the Nemir Road here. And I'm going to use that little skirmisher group over there just kind of to, to move into position to cover their retreat because, uh, you know, skirmishers are great at uh, stuff like that. <laughs> Remember what I said, they take less casualties than they inflict. And I'm just kind of facing... I. I don't consider Campy's Brigade much of a threat anymore. I think all the piss and vinegar has gone out of them. So I'm turning most of my left to face uh, the, uh, the, the kind of the center of the French line at this point. And the French are regrouping for kind of a second effort here now to push forward and take the Namir Road. Um, they have taken the forward positions I was originally occupying. But... They, you know, it was after, you know, after the objective disappeared, there's really no reason for me to continue to try and hold that location. I want to move to the location where the objectives are so that I can continue to gain points. So in that way, the scenario is kind of written so that you're supposed to withdraw. You know, you're not, you're not supposed to try and hold that forward position the entire time. So I set my skirmisher group up there. It's only a hundred men, but um, I, you know I'm basically just using them to cover the withdrawal of this unit back into the uh, back onto the Namir Road. And now I'm going to form um, kind of another go-to formation I have, and this one is more geared towards defending against a combination of infantry and cavalry. Uh, and what I'm going to do is basically I'm going to box in that artillery battery and, with squares. I'm going to put a square on either side of the artillery battery and kind of forward of it. So the artillery field of fire is still open, but there are squares kind of out in front of it on either side. And uh, then what I'm going to do is take a skirmisher unit and put them in front of the artillery battery. So the skirmish unit provides more effective fire if infantry advances, and the squares protect um, kind of the battery and the skirmishers from cavalry. So I'm right now, I'm, I'm shifting the uh, artillery batter over so that the entire battery is kind of in between these two squares and a little bit further behind them. And now I'm going to split off the skirmish unit and I'm going to move them directly in front of the artillery battery. And this is kind of a go-to formation that I use um, uh, when I'm facing a combination of infantry and, uh, and cavalry. And the, one of the reasons it's okay that, you know, in squares, in square formation, that, you know, they don't really get the better of it against line infantry. In this situation, it's okay because the artillery is going to pound the, the infantry and the cavalry, basically anything that tries to approach us. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a hybrid defense. The squares uh, protect against cavalry, and the artillery and the skirmishers are there to fight uh, the infantry and the cavalry that can't attack because the squares are protected. So that's basically it right there. Artillery, ba artillery battery, two squares, and skirmishers in front. Good formation. And we've also got some Dutch cavalry on our flank here, protecting our right flank. Uh, I don't have control over them, that, but as long as they sit there, I'm happy they're there. So 
this situation has stabilized pretty good. You can see my artillery is pounding the crap out of these French line units that are trying to shoot my squares up. Um, so they're not going to be able to stand there very long and do that because they're they're going to get pounded on by this artillery. The cavalry can't really do anything because there's two squares right there. So you know that's a pretty that's a pretty solid setup right there. And I'm, what I'm doing here is just kind of wheeling, uh, wheeling everybody into kind of facing the oncoming threat. I'm not worried about these guys anymore. They're just, they're sitting there, they're out of the battle. I'm fixing to face these guys right here. And I'm going to deploy skirmishers and do what you guys have seen me do a million times uh, with skirmishers at this point. <coughs> Which is, you know, stop the whole line kind of just with them. And I'm having these guys fall back because I'm going to set up a skirmisher line kind of right in front of these, these hedgerows here. And I'm moving a second unit up uh, to fill kind of the gap between the square on the right and that Dutch cavalry. And I'm just going to set this unit up in square again too. And uh, basically the whole purpose here of this setup is we're just going to let our artillery battery pound away the French with impunity. And they're doing a lot of damage. I mean, a ton of damage. I just got them there, and they've already got 240 points. You know, I just kind of set them up. So, you know, they're inflicting a huge amount of damage. And that's, that's the great part of the setup is that you're able to really bring your artillery to bear uh, close you know, in the front of your lines and still have them be protected against both infantry uh, and cavalry. I mean, most of the French cavalry at this point in the battle has kind of been used up. Um, they've been shot at a lot by the squares at the beginning. They were countercharged by the Dutch cavalry. Uh, so, you know, they're not really in a great position to do much, be much of a threat anymore at this point. You know, the cavalry, while very powerful, is also very fragile. You can use it up very quickly. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, I think probably both the French cavalry and the Dutch cavalry at this point are pretty used up. Uh, because they've basically been fighting each other. But, you know, they're just kind of sitting there guarding, guarding the right flank right now, and I'm fine with that. So I'm pretty ha I'm pretty happy with this situation right now. All I'm going to do is bring the supply wagon up like you saw me do in King of Westphalia and just kind of ride them back and forth um, between the caissons to make sure that that artillery battery has plenty of ammunition. Uh, okay, so now we can, uh, we can start setting up some skirmisher units here. And I'm not worried about the French trying to make too much of a charge here. These are guys that have been fighting for a while now. I'm expecting them to just, you know, form line and, uh, you know, basically try and, uh, and shoot at us. Which is a perfect time to split off the skirmisher units and have them shoot at the, uh, the French because the skirmisher units will uh, pretty much always get the best of it, as I've said many times before. Yeah, so the French are all kind of bottled up here now. They don't know what to do here. They're like, all right. We can't shark out, use cavalry, because we've got a bunch of squares in front of us. And if the infantry moves forward, they're going to get decked by this artillery, uh, you know, along with a healthy dose of skirmisher fire, and even fire from the squares. You know, so... A lot, a, a lot of the fight has gone out of the French at this point. The other thing is, is the Dutch cavalry is still sitting there off to the right, so if they get too close, such as this forward French unit did, they have to form square. And let me tell you, artillery on a square, I mean, it's, it's, it's nasty. You know, so that, that, that square unit there is not going to stand there for long because they're getting shot at by skirmishers, they're getting canister fire poured into the, the artillery battery. Um, you know, they're, they're going to get wrecked. In the meantime, we are at 5,600 points. We've already won. We are 
past the 4,500 mark. Like I said, it's really not hard to, uh, it's really not hard to do. The, the, the main thing is just to always hold the objectives. Um, and your losses aren't, aren't quite as important as they are in maybe some other scenarios. It's more about holding on to the objectives, and you're gonna get you're gonna get plenty of points. You know, so you know even if you're uh, even if you're getting the worst of it in this scenario, in terms of losing more men than you're you're killing, um, it, it's just not as critical because of how how much the objectives are worth. They're actually worth quite a bit. Uh, so it's as long as you hold on to these objectives and, and don't lose them. Um, it's almost a guarantee you're 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 gonna win this scenario. It's not hard to get above 4,500 points <clears throat> so long as you maintain your hold on the objectives. Uh, like I said, the biggest uh, the biggest thing with this scenario and the reason you know you see a lot of people just utterly fail at it, especially on YouTube, is they panic at the beginning because they're just not ready to get attacked. Uh, kind of out of the gate like that, the way the scenario starts off. You know, most scenarios in this game start off with a bit of uh, time to kind of, you know, either prepare if you're on the defense or, you know, organize an attack if you're on the offense. The action just doesn't usually just jump right out at you uh, like it does in this scenario. So, you know, the, the, the tendency is to just panic and start trying to micromanage and control everything kind of right out of the gate and I didn't really do that even though I do tend to take command of units as I move them and micromanage that's just a play style thing I prefer to be very hands-on um, but at the beginning of the scenario I pretty much left everybody where they were other than the you know the 95th rifles that were over there in the woods they were serve no purpose over there you know I, I didn't go running around like a chicken without a head. I formed square where there, where there was cavalry, and I just kind of, you know, tucked my chin in and, and, and dealt with the situation as it was. Uh, instead of trying to rush reserves forward, you know, or, you know, pull back or do some other crazy stuff that I've seen people do when they try and play the scenario. So the biggest piece of, uh, of advice I can offer when playing the scenario is just don't panic at the beginning. You, you're, you're not going to get the better of it part of the scenario. Don't worry about it. You know, form square, hold the position as best you can, get as many points as you can from that first objective. You might get overrun before you even um, are able to hold out for the entire time the objective is there. It's okay. You, you know, I'm going to get something like almost, you know, 7,500 points at the end of the scenario because I held out the objectives basically the entire time. But the scenario is still totally winnable uh, you know, even if you're overrun very quickly at the beginning, you know, don't push your reserves uh, forward uh, to try and mitigate the disaster that's going to happen at the beginning of the scenario. Just accept that it's going to happen. You know, you're gonna you're gonna not get the better of it. You're gonna get you're gonna get either you're either gonna take a lot of casualties and hold the position, or you're gonna get run off the position. Um, and it's best to just let it happen. It's part of the scenario. Uh, that that happens. So don't panic, and just hold the objectives as best you can. This this objective is easy to hold the entire time. All you got to do is, you know, do what I always do. You know, deploy skirmishers. There's no cavalry over there. Uh, you know, and just kind of stop the French advance. You've got an artillery battery over there, a great position to get the main campy's brigade. You know, just sit there and let campy come at and uh, come up and get and get wrecked. Just put a couple of skirmisher units in front of the artillery to protect them. And you'll have no problem over on the left. And set something like this up. You know, while that forward line is, is being attacked, get something like this going. With the, uh, bring the, bring the artillery up, put some squares on either side of it, put some skirmishers in the front. This is a really solid formation uh, against the AI. It, it really doesn't quite know what to do with it. Uh, as you can see here, I've actually brought some skirmisher units up on the uh, the left side of the square to aid them in firing on the uh, on the line infantry, which is another tactic I use because square formation is not great for fighting infantry. But if you can screen the square with a skirmisher unit, you're basically you know you're okay because the skirmisher unit is 
going to inflict more casualties than they take, and they're screening fire. They're screening the fire from doing too much damage to the square. Our little skirmisher line here has repulsed the uh, second French assault on the center here. And we are still shooting away, shooting away. But uh, there's only about two minutes left in this scenario now. And uh, as you can see, the cavalry in the center there, they have no idea what to do. Their morale is either too low for them to do anything, or, you know, there's just there's squares in front of them. They, you know, what are they going to do? You know, so the, the, the main point of, uh, you know, holding that kind of frontline area is, you know, giving yourself time to set something like this up. Artillery, two squares on either side, skirmishes in front. It's great defensive formation against infantry and cavalry. And it's something you'll see me use more and more as we go forward, where we're dealing with more cavalry uh, um, in, in, you know, scenarios later on. Uh, you'll see, you'll definitely see me use formations like this again. So, yeah, as you can see, not that difficult. Much less difficult than people tend to think the scenario is. It's regarded as a difficult scenario. Um, and, you know, as you can see here, I'm going to back up in a second, I think, and click on Pictive. You know, we've got 7,000 points, you know. We only need 4,500 for a major victory. Um, it's regarded as a difficult scenario because the people that play it, you know, they panic. They panic at the beginning because they're getting the, they're not getting the best of it. But we did get the best of it. We only lost 676 men, and we inflicted 2,600 points. It's only in that one local area at the beginning of the scenario that you're not going to get the best of it. You're going to get the best of it everywhere else. You know. So that's basically um, the biggest advice I can offer for this scenario. Don't panic. Don't go running around like a chicken without a head. Uh trying to stop what is inevitably going to happen anyway. Your forward units are overextended, and they're going to get either pushed back, overrun, or they're going to take a lot of casualties. Just the way it is. Um, so don't worry about it. You know, take it for, for what it is. That is basically the way the scenario is written and designed to be played. It's, you know, practically scripted that way. You really cannot hold that position for that long. And even if you do, you're going to take a lot of casualties doing it because uh, you, the cavalry forces your two rightmost units into square. And they're going to be attacked by an entire French brigade. It's simple math. You, you're, you're not going to get the better of it that way. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's okay. It's what, the, it's what you're supposed to do in the scenario. Uh, you know, you sacrifice a few pawns so that you can set up your, your bishops and your rooks and your knights, you know, that's basically what you're doing here. <clears throat> so, um, okay. That's basically it for Picton's Rascals. Uh, and hopefully now you guys have, will have a better idea how to beat that scenario. Uh, like I said, most important thing, just don't panic at the beginning. You know, Don't rush your reserves forward. You're going to need them later on to set up your defense on the Namir Road. So it's best to just sacrifice those forward units and let them get their ass kicked. That's what's going to happen. Uh, and save your reserves for the defense of the Namir Road. Because by the time the French push forward, they're largely out of gas. Because they've spent so much time trying to attack the overextended part of your line that you know, there's not much left to them, um, you know, and you, they're going to, you know, come up against, uh, you know, basically fresh troops and a nice defensive uh, setup. And, you know, they're largely going to say, the hell with this. And, uh, you know, that's how you'll win the scenario. But just, yeah, don't panic. Make sure you hold those objectives. Keep the right amount of men there. Always make sure to keep your leaders on the objectives and just watch the icons because, you um, if you see the icon change from having the uh, the allied colors to just kind of being that gold wreath-looking thing, 
um, you, you, you're no longer getting points from the objective. And in this scenario, it's important to actually pay attention to that because um, especially those those first few minutes where you're really getting your butt kicked uh, with those two units over on the right in square formation, uh, they can very quickly fall below the required number of men to occupy the objective. And at that point, you no longer have enough men uh, on the objective and you're not getting any points from it. And it's very easy to miss that uh, if you're not paying attention to the icons um, above the above the ground that uh, show you have possession of the objective. So just keep an eye on that. And, you know, if you fall below the number of men uh, required to occupy the objective, you can do what I was just going to do uh, when that happened to me is just move another unit up behind them, just in range of the objective. Now, I didn't end up doing that because the objective ended up disappearing right around that time anyway. Uh, so we just pulled back to the new objective. Um, but if that happens to you early on in the scenario where your, your, your squares just get shot up a lot faster and you fall below the required number of men, just you know maybe bring up one unit of your reserve and just put them in square you know, behind the lines, but in range of the objective. Uh, that way they won't get shot up because they're behind the lines, but they're at least in range of the objective, so you're still getting points for that. Um, so, yeah, I think I pretty much covered everything that needs to be covered in this scenario. It's really not that difficult of a scenario uh, once you have experience playing it. Um, you know, you're almost certainly going to lose it the first time you played it. I lost. You play it. I lost it the first time I played it. Uh, you know, everybody loses it the first time they play it because they're just not prepared for the kind of the action of the game to just jump out right at the beginning like that, and you have no no time for preparation, uh, no time to set up a defense. You're just kind of, oh my god, there's a lot of French, and I'm only a couple of units, and what do I do? Um, you know, so people panic, and you know they end up losing the scenario. We all have. Um, so hopefully now you have a better insight of how to beat that scenario. Um, I believe that is it for all the expansion divisional scenarios. There's only one in Ligny, which was we covered in episode 10, was the Imperial Guard Assault. Um, Katra Bra has the Namir Road and Pitkin's Rascals, which we've done now. And then Wavra had the... Um, the Prussian defense of Le Grand Pont. And I believe that is all the division scenarios uh, for all the expansions now. So all the divisional scenarios that we're going to do now are all going to be coming from the main Waterloo game. And I'm not sure which one I'm going to do next. Maybe one of the Prussian scenarios, uh, um, you know, for the attack on Plassenois or something. Uh, I'll have to I'll have to look into it and see what we're going to do next. Um but uh, in the meantime, like I said, I'm going to be redoing the brigade scenarios uh, with commentary. Maybe I'll even do one tonight because this went pretty quickly. Um, and uh, hopefully I'll have the new versions of the brigade scenarios up, uh, you know, Sunday or, or you know, Monday. Or I may just upload them one by one and uh, get that going. But uh, either way, I'm going to try and do it very quickly because it's, you know, I've already done the brigade scenarios and I don't want to spend too much time um, kind of retreading old ground, um, you know, and I want to keep going with the divisional scenario. So I'm going to try and knock all that out over the course of this weekend. Uh, so that's pretty much it, guys. Take it easy.